All right, so here we are. Um, before me is a DDG 800, and uh, we will call it a DJ today. And the question is asked how can we midi map the effect slots of number two and number three on a controller like this? Because with these Pioneer controllers, such as the DDJ 800, um, the DDJ 1000, the SRT, FLX4, FLX6, DDJ 400, and even the new um, FLX10, you know, you are given a, a channel strip for the effects, and um, you just have one effect button that will activate the effect slot number one where I have echo and through toggling these switches these switches you know for channel one channel two as well as for echo and as I turn you can see it's gonna change as I go on reverb cut and so forth right so this controller limits you from activating the second and third effect by default now, in Virtual DJ, it also allows you to use more than just three effects to the slots. You can also use um, six effects because if you look at this, you can see that you have the first three here and you also have three more. So, you know, it, yeah, that's Virtual. That's how Virtual does things. Right? It gives you a lot of options to play around and um, have fun, basically, in DJ. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how you can MIDI map the pads as well as your keyboard to activate the effects, the second and third effect. Okay, so it's a little technical, but it's not difficult. So before we get into it, really, of how to do this, right, I just want to highlight that with these controllers, you have these pad pages. And by default, you have pad effects number one that will give you what you see here on the screen of echo half beat, echo one beat, echo two beats, phaser, cut quarter beat, cut half beat, and so forth, right? So this is their way of, when I say their, I mean Pioneer's way of giving back some effects to make up for the effect slots that are missing where you're just given this one slot here so you know while you're playing a song you can have an echo okay so when you press activates okay so so that's there so you can hear the trail echo lovely but the problem is that you're not able to control the parameters of the effect that you're applying in the same way you would you know like you can use this knob like i said with the traditional effect slots that you would find on a controller like a sx2 sx3 sr you know and um so forth because you could have manually controlled them individually so you're limited in that sense so now you're just going to have to rely on these but what you can do you can change any of these pads to give you the effect that you want instead of having these default settings here and this is what we're going to do now so one of the things you need to pay attention to is the pad pages so you know like you got the default hot cue pad effects this one is not a default setting I've changed this but to change them you just right click and you can select any of them right so if you look carefully on the controller it says beat jump for page number three so if I look for beat jump I could put it back there and boom the beat jump is here so I could just press my beat jump and um, it's gonna work but with these controllers you don't need the beat jump 
unless you want the specific values of one beat two beats because these buttons these search buttons behave like a beat jump if i was to press play on this track it so So you can see that it it acts as the beat jump. So having a beat jump there using virtual is not making sense. So you can change this to something. So to change it, you just simply right click and you select any one of the effects that are there, All right? To your liking, cool? So that's one thing, but we're gonna focus now on this one, the pad effects. Now with the normal effects that are there, you may not use all of them or you may not want to use all of them i find that the cut one beat is a big cut in a song and it's not necessary so um what i've did was map that cut to behave like a, a loop out okay so your loop out is there and you know the loop out it's a, it's a cool feature so right now it's set on four beats in this one and you can increase it by the volume of those going to 16 beats eight beats right but four seems to be a fair number between four and eight and um i'm going to show you how you can map the loop out on this button here so what you're going to do is right click go to edit and you select the pad that has this one on it and in this case, it would be pad number seven. So you select pad number seven on this side here. And from there, you're gonna see the values that, that, that was in. So inside it originally had cut, and I've switched it to loop out. And I can even change the name up here to loop out for beats. Okay, close it off. And there you can see it's loop out four beat. So when I play the song, okay, and I press this pad, and it's looping out in four beats at a time. So if I release it, it's gonna continue the song so this is what you're trying to do so whatever effect you want to use you can just do it by right clicking the pad page itself clicking edit and when you click edit you're going to get the access to midi map all these pages okay so that's one way to do it the second thing you need to you can do all right, if you don't want to interfere with the default settings on the pad pages, what you can do is map the keyboard, as I said. And on my keyboard, I've mapped my controller, not my controller, I've, con I've mapped my effects to give me effect one, two, and three on deck two, on this deck, as well as four, five, and six. Or is it no i think it's the last three last three four five and six okay so if i press zero it's going to activate pressing zero it's going to activate effect one the minus sign is going to affect number two and this one is lit up because it's the same effect okay so that's the same beat grid effect hope you can see that All right and um and so forth right equal sign effect number three okay because sometimes you are limited with the amount of buttons that you have so the mapping for these though are simple as well so you go into the settings and you go to mapping and instead of selecting the controller you select your keyboard and the, this is what you're looking for right so in the case of my zero which is deck number one, no, sorry, deck number two, but effect number one. My zero says, when I select on it, effect active, deck two, effect active, underscore active, one. Okay, 
So the second one here would be the minus sign. And if you look just above the zero, you see the minus sign right there. And it says the same thing here, but when you click on it, it's now active number two. So if I am to play, if I'm to play this, the tracks again, so that effect is active. Turn it off. Okay, so whatever effect that you have in here, they are controlled by the numbers, the deck and the number. You can change them, and if you do change them, okay, like if I change this one to distortion. Oh, forgive me, I'm using a phone and looking at it through my phone. Right. So distortion is now my effect number two which is controlled by the minus sign on the deck two so press like you can see there and i can control the value of it with this knob here so so this is an idea it's, I'm not, I'm, I mean, this is not. I'm not a professional in these things, but it's a basic idea of how you can get around to do what you need to do, and I hope this helps you because, um, you know, this is what I've done with my with my effects, okay. And um, as I said, it's it's really simple to map there your stuff, right? It's like the keyboard or you select the controller, you know. Uh, I, I won't I won't do it. I won't do the controller through here at all. <laughs> this is just crazy. There's a lot going on there. And you don't want to mess that up too much. Okay, but the keyboard. You can um you can have this going on. And I've done the same thing on this side. So one, two, three will give me deck number one, one, two, three, and then Q, W, and E will give me the four, five, and six. So I have it on either side of my keyboard. So you know if if you have a Mac which does not have a number pad like this you know you're looking at a keyboard like this and um i had a mac before and that's why i did it this way so that i could activate the effects because with these controllers you're, you're really limited as to what you can do where effects are concerned and i think that was one way of doing it you know changing over some of the default settings that you find in virtual and um yeah so i hope it helps you know, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Peace.